Okay students, now let us look at the theory of gravitation or the universal of gravitation and also encounter or face a very simple problem that is two bodies falling towards the earth. Now I explain a bit later. Now as far as gravitation is concerned, Newton gave the law of gravitation that is the universal law of gravitation which states that every body in the universe attracts every other body in the universe with a force that is proportional to product of their masses and inversely proportional to square of distance between them. Now, if I write it in terms of an equation, we can write that every body in the universe attract every other body in the universe with a force that is proportional to product of their masses. So, if I write it in an equation, I will get m1 into m2 where m1 is the mass of the first body and m2 is the mass of the second body. So, f is proportional to product of mass of m1 and m2, product of their masses and inversely proportional to square of distance between them. That is, if I take the distance between m1 and m2 as r, that is distance between m1 and m2 is r, that is, let us assume this is mass m1 or the body of mass m1 and this is a body of mass m2. Now, they need not be the same mass but two masses m1 and m2. Now, the distance between the two bodies is, I will consider this as r. Now, the law says that f is inversely proportional to that is 1 by square of distance between them that is r square f is proportional to 1 by r square now if we combine equation 1 and equation 2 we will obtain the relation that says f is proportional to m1 into m2 divided by r square but however in physics as well as in mathematics we never like this sign that is the sign of proportionality so we will make it into an equation that is we will replace this sign with an equal sign and a proportionality constant which we call as, as the universal gravitational constant. So in the LHS we have f and this sign is replaced by the terms that are two terms that is the equality sign as well as the term that is g and this will be retained as it is. We will get g into m1 into m2 divided by r square. This is known as the universal law of gravitation. I repeat this is known as the universal law of gravitation where m1 is mass of the first body m2 is mass of the second body, r is the distance between the two bodies and f is the force of gravitation attracting both the bodies and g is known as the universal gravitational constant. I repeat universal gravitational constant which I mean it is the same for every body in the universe. If any body in the universe attracts every other body then the value of g is always the same. That is what I mean by saying universal. Now, so then what is g or how do we define g? So, let us say that g is equal to f or f is equal to g. Now, when does this happen? It happens when the body of mass m1 has the value of m is equal to 1 kg and m1 is also equal to and m2 is also equal to 1 kg and the distance between the two bodies that is m1 and m2 is equal to 1 meter. That is two bodies have unit mass and both the bodies are separated by distance of 1 meter that is unit distance. So, if both the bodies are of unit mass and they are separated by unit distance that is m1 equals 1 kg, m2 equals 1 kg and r equals 1 meter then the value of g is equal to the value of force. However, there is one slight difference that is the unit of force and unit of g are slightly different because the unit of force is given by unit of force is Newton. Wherever the unit of g, we can see that unit of g is if we keep g here and take all the terms to the LHS, we get that g is equal to f into r square by m1 into m2. This means g is given by the unit of f into r square by m1 into m2. Now, the unit of force is Newton, unit of distance is meter, hence unit of distance square is meter square and m1 is kg, m2 is kg. So, we get the unit as Newton meter square per kg square. Now, that is what is known as g or universal gravitational constant. Now, if we were to look at the mysterious term that is g in the equation g into m1 into m2 by r square equals f which is again the universal law of gravitation. Now, if the masses m1 and m2 are both equal to 1 kg each and I mean unit mass, unit mass means 1 kg and the distance between the two masses m1 and m2 is equals 1 meter. So, the masses are 
M1 equals 1 kg, M2 equals 1 kg and R is 1 meter. That is, if we write the two bodies as M1 and M2 here, this is 1 kg, even this is 1 kg and distance between the center of mass here is 1 meter. Now, the value of G is equal to value of F, not the direction, but only the value, that is it. We can write F is equal to G or G is equal to F when two bodies are separated by unit distance and have unit mass. Now we will jump into the question that I told I would ask. Now the question is this, if you were to drop two bodies from the same height towards the earth in the absence of air, I repeat, in the absence of air, would they drop to the earth or would they touch the earth at the same time or would they drop at different times? Now there is a small twist in the question. The very small twist is the two bodies have different masses that is the body M1 or the particle M1 has higher mass or we can call it a heavier body and the second body is a little bit lighter compared to the first mass M1. So let me take two examples that is let us consider this is the earth and earth has a mass capital M is what I would write because mass of the earth is a constant it would not change and I have a first body at a distance R and its mass is M1. Now, in the second example, I would have the exact same earth because earth is same. So, the mass of earth would be remain the same, m is same. But what I would change is the mass of the body that is being dropped down. That is, I would write this as m2. I will say m2 is greater than m1 because mass of the first body and mass of the second body, I will take them as different values. Now, my question to you is, in the absence of here, if I were to drop both the bodies from the same height, that is r, the same height, that is r would they touch the earth at exactly the same time or would they touch the earth at different times that is would the heavier body fall first or would the lighter body fall first now we will get to that question now we have two formulas for force and both are given by newton the first law states that f is equal to that is force is equal to mass into acceleration where f is force acting on the body or by the body m is mass of the body and a acceleration is rate of change of velocity of the body a is acceleration also known as rate of change of velocity of the body and on the other hand we have the universal law of gravitation that says f equals g into m1 into m2 divided by r square now we have two cases that is body of mass m1 and the body of mass m2 and both of them are at the same height and both of them would be released with an initial velocity of 0 meters per second because you are releasing them and not throwing them towards the earth. Now that is my condition. If you are releasing them at the initial position, their velocity is 0. So the initial velocity is 0. Now if the velocity at the final position, that is before touching the earth, would it be same? Would it be constant? Is the time taken for them to reach the earth, is it same or is it different? That is my question. Now we will derive an answer for that. For that, we have to calculate the rate of change of velocity or also known as acceleration. Now, if I have to derive the value for acceleration, I would equate these two terms. Let us say for the mass of body M1, okay, the mass M1, I would take F is equal to M1 into A. Similarly, for the second body, I would take here, I would take F is equal to M2 into A because they are different masses and the force acting on the two bodies are different. It is obvious because the masses are different and I said M2 is greater than M1 or you can also consider M1 greater than M2. It's simply your choice. Now, second equation says that F is equal to, again I have considered mass of the earth as capital M. So, I would replace M1 by capital M and M2 by this mass. Okay. In this case, it is M1. In this case, it is M2. That is the mass of the body that is falling down. Now remember, we are considering two separate objects and we are considering the gravitational force between the earth and the object, not the object themselves because that is very very negligible. Considering the mass of the earth and considering the mass of two bodies, if we consider the gravitational force between the earth and the object and the two objects themselves, the gravitational force between the two objects themselves is very very low and negligible. So we will only consider the gravitational force between the earth and the mass that is falling down. Coming back to the equation, we can write F is equal to, from this equation I will write, G will remain a constant. The mass of the first body, that is the earth, I will write it as capital M. And in this case, mass of the second body is, I have written here, it is M1. G into capital M into M1 
divided by I said same height that is r r square okay the value is r square similarly in this equation I can write f is equal to g is again the same m that is mass of the first body which is the earth is always the same so I'll write capital M that is mass of the earth whereas the mass of the falling body in this case is here m2 here it is m1 here it is m2 I'll write g into m into m2 divided by r square because we are dropping them from the same height that is r as I said earlier distance from the earth to the particle is exactly the same r remains same now would the value of acceleration differ in the both cases that is my question because if acceleration is more then velocity would increase more that is the time taken would be smaller if acceleration is more velocity is more if velocity is more time taken is smaller now that is the question now combining the two equations we can see that in both the equations LHS value is equal if LHS of both the equations are equal then it is from mathematical perspective RHS should be equal so we can write m into a or m1 into a is equal to g into m into m1 by r square so i'll write this as m1 into a equals g into m into m1 by r square i repeat m1 into a equals g into m into m1 by r square now my assumption or i do not know for a fact that will the value of acceleration be same or different so I would consider the acceleration of the first body as a1 and acceleration of the second body as a2. Let me write it a little bit more clearly. Acceleration of first body is a1, acceleration of second body is a2. So here I would get m1 into a1 is equal to g into m into m1 by r square. Similarly in the second case, equating RHS of both sides, I can write m2 into, here I will consider acceleration as a2, m2 into a2 is equal to capital G into capital M into M2 divided by R square okay now from these separate equations we will cancel M1 on both sides because on both sides we have M1 we can cancel M1 here and we can cancel M2 here if I write this on the right hand side if I write both the equations that is this equation and this equation on the right hand side for you to refer the equation is here I'll just shift them over to the right side I can write a1 is equal to I can get g is equal to g into I have retained m and I have another factor that is r square that is the equation for a1 similarly for a2 I can write a2 equals the term m2 has been cancelled so I will be retained with g into capital M divided by r square again you can see that you have LHS of both terms are different however RHS is exactly the same that is g into m by r square g into m by r square so we can conclude that a1 is equal to a2 a1 is equal to a2 so now if you were to consider n number of bodies any number of bodies and if you consider that acceleration of all the bodies are different with respect to them you would say a1, a2, a3, a4 up to n number of particles for n number of masses everything would be equal you can write a1 equals a2 equals a3 so on equals a n if you take any body of any mass the value of acceleration due to gravity is same now I said the term acceleration due to gravity because that is what we call this term on the earth we call the value of gravitation or rate of change of velocity as we call it as a is equal to g is what we call and the value of g on the surface of the earth is equal to 9.8 meter per second square so by this value we can know that the value of g that is acceleration or rate of change of velocity is a constant hence as rate of change of velocity is a constant the velocity for both the bodies would increase in the exact same manner and hence the time taken by the bodies to reach the surface of the earth would be exactly the same